COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I have no toilet paper, I don't even have a snack. Hey, coronavirus, I want my life back. I was just looking. Whose comment was that? Uh, Diana's. Evening, everyone. It's Friday. The weekend is here. Oh, yeah. Every day is like a weekend. <laughs> it kind of does blend into each other. Hi, isolators. How are How is everybody? How are you all doing today? Um, I want to get to uh, the Gratefuls right now. And uh, the other thing I was looking at, some of the pictures in your avatars, I'd like an explanation from, from some of you about what some of the pictures mean. So maybe we'll do that in a little bit as well. But for now, let's find out what we are grateful for today. I'm grateful for what a beautiful day it was. And I know it's, it's easy to fall back on the weather, isn't it? It has been beautiful. And it looks as though we do have some rain on the way for the weekend. So this evening is the, the evening to enjoy. Find a place to watch the uh, sunset, some gorgeous places for sunset. If you're in Toronto, Riverdale Park, Great place to watch the sunset. Lots of people go out there and they social distance. That is nice. Uh, and then anybody who is up along the lake here on shoreline, lucky you, most beautiful sunsets in the world, according to National Geographic uh, years and years ago. Thankful I finally got my dishes done. Don't you have someone that does that for you, Patricia? I, I was just wondering. Uh, what else is up? Uh, grateful for patience and knowing things will work out. Good for you, Sandy. That is fantastic. That is, the, that is the attitude. It will work out. So instead of being anxious, thinking and sort of settling back and saying, it's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm patient. I'm patient. Tim Hortons, who should sponsor Kevin's Isolators? Are you listening to me? That would be a nice, that would be a nice sponsor, wouldn't it? Uh, just a second. Mm. Ah, that is actually Tim Hortons ground coffee. That's why I was doing that. Uh, grateful for the grand prize I won from the Spring Mill Distillery. I'm not allowed alcohol, so I have some great gifts for Christmas. Oh, nice. There, congratulations. Had a chat on the phone with a special friend, and that's fantastic. Uh, what else do we have? Grateful that uh, I, I got lots of jobs around the house done today. Grateful Kevin didn't give up on us, so appreciate it. Okay, I'm not going to give up on you. I won't. I won't. I won't. And in fact... I gave up on you a bit last night, I was thinking, after I got off the air, because we had gone through that survey. Oh, grateful my puppy made it through surgery today. I'm glad too, Donna. I'm glad. Uh, I'm, um, I, I, after we got off yesterday, I, I was thinking, I never really checked in with everybody on how they were feeling about the survey. Did it, did it represent anything that you were feeling? If you were with us yesterday, or maybe you weren't, let me just quickly recap. There was a, a fairly significant survey done about mental health and the impact that COVID isolation has had on mental health. And the news was rather troubling. We had Margaret Eaton on from the Canadian Mental Health Association to talk about that. And that was the word that they used, that the, the, the results were kind of troubling. So I wanted to take this chance to go over a bit of the surveys with you, look at some of the results, and see if there's anything, maybe some advice we can give each other to help mitigate some of the troubling parts of the survey. So let's go back to take a look at a bit of the survey. And uh, one of the, the first things that caught my eye in that survey was the, uh, the mental health decline and what people had reported for the mental health decline. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at that. And uh, it had reported that out of the people who had responded saying, my, my mental health has declined, out of the general population, 38% had said that, yeah, their mental health has declined. Now, while that's not 100% or it's not 50%, that's still rather troubling because you think of that uh, 38%. So that's more than one in three people said, yeah, my mental health has declined. So what say you? Uh, what, what are some of your answers? If, if I was to ask you right now, has your mental health declined as a result of isolation? Let me know. Let's, uh, let's, go, over some of, uh, let's go over some of your answers about that. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, Carol says, oh, my Car Carol says that she can't watch for a couple of weeks. Carol, s someone has to keep in touch with Carol. Find out Carol's email, something like that. Make sure she knows what's going on. Pass on anything interesting to her. Uh, okay. Uh, the survey made me feel like uh, I will really miss this 7 p.m. tradition. Yeah, it sort of hit me today, too. 
Yeah, Mike, that, that's a good point. You know, tradition and, and ritual. My anxiety has hit the roof lately, Barbara. Okay, what can we do about Barbara's anxiety? And Barbara, maybe you can expand on that. What, what has been the cause of your anxiety hitting the roof lately? Is it, is it timing? Is it, what is it? What is it? I would suggest maybe you could, you could what is it? Uh, today on the news, they reported adults are calling the kids help. Like, yes, it is actually, um, kids help phone actually let me know that they are now accepting adults to call because the need was so great. So they've added extra lines and they've added volunteers to help with that. My suggestion is if you really want to do something and make yourself feel better, remember we've always talked about when you help out, it makes you feel better. Get in touch with Kids Help Phone. Get in touch with Kids Help Phone. Uh, I'll get to Barbara in just, just a moment. Hold on to your fear for a second, Barbara. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to, to sidetrack you. We will get to that. I want to finish my thought on Kids Help Phone. I would strongly encourage everyone, everyone, if and it doesn't take much time, Contact Kids Help Phone. They put you through a very, very detailed training process online. It's very good. You are never alone. You can work on your computer. You don't even have to answer phones. You can, you can, you can be online, but uh, they, they like the people on the phones as well. So they put you through a training process and you're never far away from someone who can help you to go through the process. There are a lot of people that need to hear from you. So go to Kids Help Phone and uh, please volunteer your time. Good Neighbors Project, who we talked about yesterday, who celebrated their 100th day, can always use volunteers. I know they have 6,000 volunteers, but their phone calls are through the roof as well. The, 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 the calls for service. So you, you can help them uh, as well. So get in touch with them. Find someone to help. It will really help. So Barbara was saying fear. Now, I am going to... to and, and Barbara, if you want to provide any more info, that, that's fine. But... I'm going to guess it's just fear of the unknown, fear of the end of isolation, but no real idea of which direction we're going, whether or not there's going to be a second wave. There will be a second wave. There will. How bad it is, that is left to question. If we behave, it, it, it can be manageable. I went out last night. I saw a lot of patios open. I went down John Street. A lot of patios open. However... I saw one place that, mm, no, it was not social distancing. It was, uh, well, the name is Fiegel, uh, right at the corner of John and Adelaide. I think they tried to seat people far enough away from each other, but it was, it was, it seemed packed. It seems everybody was on top of each other. And that is going to make a second wave much worse. I know you want to get out to the patio. In fact, I bet you it's packed right now, tonight. I know you want to get out. Uh, but it's just going to make it worse if we don't practice some patience. So I know that there's a lot of fear out there because we don't have a solid idea of, of what's going to open. I mean, we, we've heard, we've heard that, um, I, I heard that Qantas is now not flying anyone into Australia for a year. Um, let me see. I know mine has. So, so okay, Paula has her, her uh, anxiety has gone up. And we know Paula is living with a, a husband who has um, uh, dementia. And, and today he forgot her name. It came back to him after some time. Made me sob. Paula, we're here for you. That's tough. There's no words that are going to make that better. But there is strength here for you. That's tough. And it's tough to watch that happen to a loved one. Uh I don't know. I, I wish I could say something to take it away. It's not. And I know you're probably feeling like sobbing right now if you aren't already. We're here for you. Uh, some strength. You're not alone. And it's tough. It's tough. And all the more reason we need, to, we need to do more research into dementia and Alzheimer's and that. We need to take care of our brains. We need to take care of our brains. Paula, we are all, we are all with you. Uh, Barbara says, I smoke and really scared. I have uh, a disabled sister, so it really scares me. I, okay, I'm not sure what, what I smoke and really scared that I have a disabled sister, so it really scares me. Okay, I'm, I'm not, again, and I don't want to keep prying. I, I, just, I, I just wanted you to know that there are, there are people here. So we know that the anxiety is, is, has grown in many of us. I've been okay, and do you know why I've been okay? Why my anxiety hasn't grown? Because of you. That's why my anxiety hasn't grown, because not only have I done this show to keep myself busy, but your comments, your strength, 
have helped me along. And I can honestly say that my anxiety has not worsened since the beginning of isolation. In fact, it may worsen starting Sunday when, when I'm not doing it every day. So I will have to check in with you from time to time. So how about that? I'm going to check in from time to time on Facebook. It's not going to be anything formal, okay? It's just going to turn it on. It won't be an intro. It won't be all sorts of things. I'll just check in every once in a while, okay? So put on your notifications, and I think that's, that's what I'll do. Um, what else? Uh, let me see. Oh, is Carol saying she doesn't have any data on her phone, but, but maybe, oh, I guess she said she, there's no, no um, internet. All right, we'll take notes for you, Carol. Let's go to the next part of the, the survey, and we're going to talk about that anxiousness and, and that stress. And out of those who said, I feel anxious and worried, 46% said, I feel anxious and worried. Now, that's out of the people who, who are on the mental health decline. That gets to be about half. Those numbers become much more troubling. And our vulnerable populations, so let's define our vulnerable populations. Well, obviously, the elderly, the immune compromised, they come to mind first. So anybody who is at a greater risk of more severe problems is a vulnerable population. However, those who are on the low income side, those of color, those of different race, religion, those LGBTQ, they're also part of the vulnerable population. Why? Because they get forgotten about. They get sidelined. Uh, they struggle more than, than, than most people do. There are than other people do. I shouldn't say most than other, other people do. And it's almost as though society gave up or only wants to go so far and doesn't care. And isn't that a shame, especially when I talk about LGBTQ and we're talking about Pride Month here, and this would have been Pride Weekend, right? And the, the, the LGBTQ community has come so far. And it's like you take a, it seems like you take a step forward and you get knocked two steps back. Uh, and, and you hear what's happening in, in, in the state, and I keep going back to what's happening in the states where they're, they're going, they want to, or they are cutting back on coverage. And don't think there aren't, there aren't people here on this side of the border that would love to do the same thing as well. And for those who have lo are on the low income side, and those, and, and we have seen the black population get a double whammy, not only with COVID isolation, but with racial discrimination. And I don't know about you, but, but I've kind of found that these protests have intensified racism in some ways because those who are racist have dug their heels in and are shouting louder than ever. Uh, and, and it can be discouraging on the surface, but the vast majority of people the real silent majority of people are those who are against racism. Those who are against homophobia. Those are the vast majority. That is the silent majority. All this crap of people who are, you know, right-wing extremists and, 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 and want to clamp down on, on social programs, that they're not the silent majority. They're the loud minority. It, the world is a good place and it's full of good people. It's full of wonderful people. So try and think of that instead, although you don't hear those voices very much. You don't hear those voices as much. Think of it though. We're all here. We're all here for, uh, for each other. Uh, let's go to the next one because I want to, this is very important, okay? This, this is really important. And that's talking about suicide. And I've got two results I want to show you here. So I've had suicidal thoughts. We look back at this and it says 6% of the population with COVID isolation, it has made them turn towards suicidal thoughts. Now that's bad enough. Okay. That, that's 6% too much to have had suicidal thoughts, but take a look at this. Out of the general population at 60% have suicidal thoughts, but that triples to people who are already struggling with mental health problems. That triples almost triples with those who have a disability or low income. 
For the indigenous population, did I spell that right? Indigenous, okay, good. I'm terrible at spelling. I'm, at, I'm horrible at spelling. And again, that is almost tripled. That is a sign that people feel disenfranchised, that they feel forgotten. I still can't get over the thought that there are many indigenous communities that don't even have proper drinking water. Like, like proper, <laughs> could you imagine? Let, let's take a small little place, some small place, um, uh, Nobel up north, uh, just, just some, some, some small hamlet of, say, 500 to 1,000 people. And if they ever said that they don't have clean drinking water, well, oh my gosh, the water trucks would be rolling, we would be opening up the, the government coffers, we would be ripping up pipes or putting pipes in, and that, but sometimes, or, or when, it's, when it's an indigenous community, we, we decide that, no, it, it, we're not gonna react the same. Uh, I, I, I don't, you know, you know what, we're all, in, we're all the same boat. We're all the same community. I will call us all Canadians, okay? And I know some, 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 uh, some First Nations will take exception to that. And the reason I call us Canadians is because we inhabit this land together. And right now the land is called Canada. So I, I call us all Canadians. And the reason I bring us all into that group is we need to take care of each other no matter what. No matter what our beliefs, no matter the color of our skin, no matter our religion, no matter, no matter if we are extreme right-wing people, left-wing people, centrists, anarchists, whatever. We're all Canadians. Whether you like it or not, we're all in the same land. And I don't care if I disagree with you. I want to make sure you have the proper cover. I want to make sure you have proper health, and I want you to make sure you have access. So all these things added up will really increase the suicide rate. The suicide rate, by the way, in the indigenous population was already Hi, now we're talking, this is, this is in addition to those problems, and that's inexcusable. That's inexcusable. We are human beings first. And whatever, white, black, whatever, next, somewhere down the line, we're human beings first. If you want to get technical about it, if you want to get really technical about it, Researchers have found that there is that much difference between races when it comes to your DNA and, and, and your, gene, your the human genome. There's, there's that much difference. Do you know why someone's skin is a different color than someone else's? Because of geography, because of where their ancestors are from and their placement towards the sun and heat and cold. And it has it, it, and that's a reason to to sideline someone or or not give them the same care and thought. So we really need, in this isolation especially, we really need to think about those who are disenfranchised. And it could be a remote community in northern Ontario. It can be a community here in Toronto, in the busiest parts of Toronto. There are people who are on the outside that we have put on the outside and we let stay on the outside, and they are impacted more by COVID because they are the ones that still have no choice but to work and to work in some places where isolation isn't possible and to get on public transit and to serve people. They have no choice. Some of us have a choice. I'm, I am very fortunate and I'm thankful for that. I'm fortunate that I am able to take this time off. There are other people who don't have a big choice but still are able to survive okay, but they need to get back to work. But those on the low income side are so much more susceptible to COVID. And therefore, when they think that all, when they think that all hope is gone, sometimes suicide seems like the, the only way out. I thought about it in the past. I thought about it in the past when things get really dark. And, and you know, whenever you have anxiety and depression, this is, this is kind of how you go through life, right? You only, you put the blinders on and you're very narrow, you're, you're, you're very narrow minded, very narrow vision. You only see the anxiety, the stress. You don't see the sunshine out here. The curtains are always closed. 
And when you start having suicidal thoughts, that, this is what happens. You start getting an even narrower view. There's help out there. It's not the answer. That's where patience comes in. Um, so it, it's very easy for me to sit here and say, give it some time. But I'll tell you what, if you've had suicidal thoughts, or you still do, or you think you might, I want you to take down one of these numbers that you see across the screen that are there every show, especially this one, Crisis Services Canada, 833-456-4566. I want you to put that number somewhere. Okay, I think Parker's going to, uh, he's going to freeze that particular number for you. Hold on. Thanks. Um, I want you to put that number somewhere you can find it. So when your vision goes like this, I want you to call them and tell them, listen, I, I, I really feel I want to hurt myself. And you know what they're going to do? I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to tell you to stop it. They'll talk to you. They're, they're trained to help you open up a bit. So don't be alone. Even if you are alone in your household, don't stay alone. There are ways now to reach out, more ways than we've ever had before. Isn't it funny in this world that where there had never been more ways to reach out and, and be a, 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 get that help? that we've got more lonely people than ever. And that, by the way, is something that I want to work on after Sunday. That the phase two of whatever Kevin's Isolators turns into is something that is going to reach out to everyone, no matter what. It'll be okay. Put, make a tape recording of that. It will be okay. Give it some time. It will be okay. Crap happens. I'm not going to swear because I, I know you guys hate it when I swear. But crap happens. Uh, good stuff happens too, right? I wish that was the same. Good things happen. Not, well, actually it is. Good things happen to those who wait. So instead of, you know, it's, think about it. When you're like this, it seems like there's only one answer. There really are people out there who would dearly miss you if you were gone. Put that in your mind, okay? Please. But put this number down. Take that number down. You may not need it tonight, but put it down somewhere. Okay, next thing on the survey talks about men and women. Now, my, my audience, as I found out from my survey, skews extremely heavy women. Not heavy women, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean I skew towards heavy women. It's heavier. Thank you, Parker. There are more women watching me than men. Skinny women. Light women. Did I get out of it? No? Okay. Uh, so let's, let's find out the differences between that. This is actually not a surprise, as Margaret told us last night that when we talk about mental health decline, it is more on the female side than it is on the male side. Women, for, for all of our calls for equality, and I, and I talked about this last night, there, there are still factors that make men and women extremely different. One of the factors is your emotions. However, keep in mind that can work the other way for men who hide their emotions more. But for women, they tend to be more emotional and think of things more emotionally. They tend to bear the, the brunt of worry and anxiety in the home, where there is a man and woman there. They, 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 they tend to do more work in the home than, than men do. And yes, I know, I know. There are many men out there who cook and clean and in some cases actually may do more work or half the work. But more often, Statistics show us it's, it's still women that carry the brunt. Women tend to have the lower paying jobs, even if they're doing the same thing as a man. So all this together means women tend to have more anxiety and stress than men. 
So all the more reason, guys, that you need to check in with your female partner or female sister, whatever, to make sure that, that they're okay. And is there anything you can do? It's funny, I had a discussion today too. I was talking uh, with someone about phase two and we got into the discussion about we want to help people who have depression and anxiety. Yes. But you know who we always forget about? We forget about those who live with someone who has depression and anxiety or with someone who, who has dementia. Paula, we, you know, we're thinking how terrible it is to have anxiety and depression, but it is very difficult, sometimes hell, to live with someone who has depression and anxiety because they don't understand, you don't understand, you can't change their mind, you, you want to do something, and then finally you just say, ah, screw it. And, and that's what happens. So I want to make sure that whatever happens, that I'm able to help people on both sides. So that, you know, because, because that affects your mental health as well. If there's somebody who you can't get through to, or you feel so bad for, or you want to help. Okay. Two more in them, and then we're going to call it a night. Uh, family time. And this has some good and some bad. So we'll start with the bad. I always like bad news first. So 23% of people are saying that with isolation, more conflicts with their kids. More yelling and shouting, disciplining kids more, that's 17%. 12% of people reported they're worried about their own safety. So we're talking about domestic violence here, and that's both emotional and physical. Using harsh words more. I thought that would have been higher. Only 11% said they use more harsh words. Maybe we're just already using a lot of harsh words. This, this is something that is expected. Now, this isn't going to make it any easier. However, it's expected because you're in close quarters. And remember, remember I, I'm old enough to remember when during the day kids went to school and, and the parents quite often went, went to work. That's my, uh, that's my rice. It's just, uh, hey, can you just open the door of the microwave or else it's going to keep beeping. All the, sorry, I'm cooking rice. But we all used to go out to work, to school during the day, so we weren't together 24-7. And then when the kids came home or you came home, you had friends to go out with and things to do, so you did that. Well, no, we've spent three months, 100 days like this. So yeah, things are going. That's one of those things where it's like you say to yourself, okay, now I get it. I understand. So more than one expert told us one of the things that we need to do, and if you haven't been doing this already, you need to start now. Everybody needs a corner. Everybody needs a place in the house, a place to go, that's theirs and theirs alone and they need time alone. It's not gonna solve everything. It's gonna give you a bit of a relief valve. So be aware. You, you already probably try and find some time on your own, but try and make sure everybody in your family has time on their own as well. I'm having a coffee and it's getting cold because I'm talking too much. So let's get to the what's, what has been good though. More time together has resulted in Wow, 66% said more quality time with the kids. That is great. Who knows? Maybe we have strengthened some families through this. Uh, feeling more closeness, showing more love and affection, and saying their kids are showing resilience. So almost surprised that their kids are showing resilience. And we've seen in some cases that, that kids are really showing us uh, the way. Let's get to some of your comments, all right? Let, let's get to some of your comments. Leave the, uh, the rest of the program to you and uh, find out uh, what you're thinking. Uh, retirement does the same thing. All of a sudden, you're constantly together. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why you go to bingo. No, I'm sorry. I'm stereotyping, right, already. Uh, retirement does the same thing. All of a sudden, you're constantly... Okay, sorry. Uh, hold on. What else do we have here? Uh, okay. Uh, let's, let's look at Kelly's. Yeah, I'm alone, so be okay. I have a tendency to self-harm. Kelly, we're, we're with you, right? But that's because case manager has been calling me to check in, but uh, Roots workers and the video chats help as well. So we want people to check in with each other. So you're talking, we've talked about, you know, oh, I checked in with a friend or something like that. And you may think, oh, it's nothing. Hey, Bob. Hey, 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 Julie, how you doing? Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye. And you may think, okay, that was nice. And you go on your day. 
you may have saved their life. You don't know. So check in with people. Keep checking in. Keep checking in. Uh, what else? Uh, I have become more creative with my kids. Yeah, you've been sort of forced <laughs> to, to do that. And I, I, I hope that has worked. Um, what else? Uh, yes, it's fun. Uh, sorry, I said that uh, that is what retirement will be. Oh, I'm never retiring. Yes, Paula. Yeah, <laughs> if that, so you don't want that. Uh, let, let's do uh, one more. Mike, for you, my friend. We've had uh, 10 Zoom staff meetings and none of them went that great. LOL. Yeah. Yeah, it can be a challenge. It can be a challenge. Okay, folks. Uh, I am uh, going to uh, say goodnight for tonight. We have two more shows in this phase of Kevin's Isolated. So I, I should stop calling it the final show on Sunday and just call it uh, the end of phase one or volume one or season one or anything like that. I hope that, uh, I hope that everybody takes a breath and just keep saying to themselves, it's going to be okay. And if you're in fear of wanting to harm yourself, reach out to these numbers. They're there. And like I said, the kids help phone now taking adults as well. If you need to, uh, the, uh, assault women's hotline, uh, they will jump through hoops for you to get you out of an abusive situation. And they will make sure it's kept quiet and secret. It'll be kept off your, your computer history, your phone history, things that they will have good advice for you. So reach out. Remember the old song? Reach out, reach out and touch someone. Yeah, I know the rice is waiting, Mike. What's, what commercial was that for? Reach out. Was that Yellow Pages or Long Distance? Well, I think it was Long Distance. There used to be an ad campaign years ago for long distance because they made a lot of money off, off long distance at that time. They don't make as much anymore. Reach out, reach out and touch them. That's bothering me now. Someone help me. I'm not going off the air until someone reminds me. Uh, reach out, reach out and touch them. I think it was long distance. That long distance feeling. Wasn't that the, wasn't that the motto? Yeah, it was a phone company, Pam. You're right. I think it was Bell. I think it was Bell Canada. Yeah, Bell Canada. Yeah, Red. I think it was a Bell Canada ad. I think, uh, I think that's right. Yeah. Reach out. Now you're going to be singing that all night long. Maybe we should do that tomorrow for our second last show. We'll, we'll, we'll place. Okay. That's what we're doing tomorrow. I'm putting together a bunch of, of, of commercials and jingles, things you haven't heard forever. And we're going to play a guessing game on um, what, what it is. All right, so we're going to do that tomorrow. We're going, to have, we're going to have fun tomorrow. It's all about being lighthearted, fun tomorrow. Something you can do with your friends as well. All right. Got to go. No, I don't have to go. I'm going to go. I'm not supposed to say I got to go. COVID-19. Wow, Parker's quick on the trigger finger there. Yeah, that's right. Parker's saying he's like the Academy. I'm being played off the stage. So until tomorrow, thanks for joining. Take care of yourself. And especially take care of each other. COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I have no toilet paper, I don't even have a stick.